Hey guys, this is going to be a quick video on making use of the form widget. And in this video, we're going to take a look at three things. First, starting with how to set up the form widget. Then we're going to take a look at how to set up custom validations for the form widget. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to read data from the form widget. My name is Confident and I'm a developer advocate at AppSmith. Without any delay, let's get started. So right here, I have a simple application on the canvas, and this is a table widget that is pulling in data from the get users query. So let's hop in there to see what we have set up in the get users query. This is a Postgres query that grabs about 10 users from the database, and we have all of that data displayed on the table. So let's say we need to build a form to be able to update a user record. For example, a user's name and email. So to do that, we actually need a form widget. So let's go into bringing a form widget. So I'm just going to search for a form widget. And here we have the form widget showing up. I should mention at this point that we also have a JSON form widget and we made a video on using the JSON form widget. I have that linked below so you can go check it out. But let's go on to using the form widget because that's why we're all here. So let's go on to use this. And here we have a form widget on the canvas. Now to actually use the form widget, we need other widgets within it. And we need widgets like the input widget, the date picker widget, and so many other widgets that can be used to collect user input. So let's go with the input widget. So I'm just going to search for the input widget, for example, and I can drop this here. Let's expand this. Okay, I'm going to expand this. And now we need to go in to configure the input widget. So for this input widget, I'm going to set it to update a user's name, for example. And let's also make sure that the default value of the widget is the name of the user selected from the table. So we can do something like table one dot selected row dot name, for example. And you can see we have Hilda Fisher showing up. Now we need one more input to be able to update the user's name. All right, so let's go into do this. And for the label, this is going to be email rather. So this is email, all right, we have email right there. For the default text, this is going to be, as you already guessed, table one dot selected row dot email. All right, and one other thing we can do here is update the data type of this input to be of type email so that we have all of the custom validations that come with the email input type. One other last touch we can add here is actually give this form a title. So let's say update user and there we have a nice form showing up. So here we have the form set up and the next thing I'm going to show you is how to set up validations for the form widget. Taking a look at the form we have here, let's go into the submit button. You can see that the submit button is set to be disabled on invalid form fields. So whenever there's an invalid field, the user is not going to be able to submit the form. And I'm just going to show you an example here. So for example, if we have an invalid email address, you can see that the submit button is disabled and the user can't go ahead to submit the form. So what you can do is go into the inputs you have here and set up an expressive logic to validate the user's input. So you can use regex, for example, or if you prefer using JavaScript, you can also write some JavaScript here to determine the validity of the input widget. And you need to go do this for all of the various inputs you have set up in cases where you need special validation to be configured. So let's go in to fix this. And here you can see that we have the submit button enabled. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you in this video is how to read data from the form widget. Now that we have the form widget built out and a user can actually make use of the form, we need a way to read data back from the form. And to show you how to do this, let's go to create a query that actually makes the update to the database. So here I have the Postgres query and I have the users table. I'm just going to use this really cool template feature that makes it easy to start up a query as a template. So let's use the insert. Okay, we actually need the update template. All right, and let's call this the update user query. Okay, so for these templates, we actually need just a few fields. So we would need the name and email, and we can actually take all of the other fields out. Then we also need to update the where condition. So let's say where ID 
is equal to the ID of the user selected from the table, for example. So this is going to be a binding like table1.selectedRow.id. All right, and we have that ID showing up. I'm just going to turn off prepared statements so that you can see the evaluated value right here. Now, uh, we can go into pulling the data for the name and email fields from the form. So what I can do here is to write a binding that accesses the form data. So we can say form one, which is the name of the form widget, and we can do a dot data. And then taking a look at this, we actually have input one, which contains the name data. So we can say dot input one, for example. And here we have the user's name train up. Same also goes for the email field. We can also access this from the form data, but I'm just going to do this by accessing the widget directly. So this is going to be input two dot text, and this is going the route of accessing the widget data directly. So we can see we have both the user's name and emails selected, and we can go on to use this query whenever the update button is clicked on. So let's head back to the canvas, and when the submit button is clicked, what we want to do is to execute the update query and when that's successful we can also go in to execute the get users query so that we have the state of the application updated so i'm going to set uh, the name to header fisher 2 for example and then go ahead to click on submit and you can see that that change has been saved to the database and the record has been updated here as well all right that's all about using the form widget like i promised i'm going to leave a video right here that shows you how to set up custom validation for the input widgets. So go check out this video. The link will also be in the description. And we also made a video right here on using the JSON form widget. It's a really powerful widget. And if you're interested in the form widget, you should also go check out the video we made on the JSON form widget. Links are also in the description. All right, that'll be all for today's video. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.